This is your 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app tropical weather update for this Friday afternoon, October 7th. We have two tropical cyclones in the eastern Pacific that we will touch on in just a moment. But first, starting off with the Atlantic, we have a tropical disturbance or subtropical disturbance that is likely to develop near Florida during the middle half of the weekend. This afternoon's basin-wide satellite image shows that Hurricane Philippe is now moving out to sea and is no threat to land. But here we are looking toward the Florida Straits and southwest Bahamas where we already see a slight increase in convection compared to yesterday afternoon. And that is in response to the development of the upper level low over the southeast Gulf of Mexico that we have been anticipating. Now this upper level low is not tropical in nature and it is bringing with it a lot of strong southwest wind shear over much of the western Caribbean and southwest Atlantic. However, the upper level divergence of the winds will allow for some lifting at the surface and so therefore we will continue to see increasing convection over this general area and with time a surface low may begin to develop over the warm waters just to the east of the Florida Peninsula. Now there is still some model disagreement as to where exactly this low will form. The European model is still developing a weak low over the southeast gulf whereas a couple of the other models most notably the GFS is showing a developing surface low riding up the eastern side of Florida and eventually moving off into Georgia and the Carolinas. As of right now, no matter how you slice it, it still looks like much of the central and southern half of the Florida Peninsula is going to be inundated by several inches of rainfall with gusts exceeding tropical storm force. In fact, even the Jacksonville National Weather Service office is expecting to have to issue flood watches for their local forecast area and this threat, as mentioned before, will eventually extend up the southeast coast into Georgia and even South Carolina and North Carolina. And along with this development of a surface low, there may be a slight chance of an isolated brief tornado, but that risk is mainly going to be confined to the coastline and it's not going to be an overly significant threat. This is the Monday morning surface analysis forecast from the HPC. They are forecasting the development of a very weak surface low over the southeast Gulf of Mexico. As we work our way into Tuesday, that low will continue moving north-northwest in the general direction of Tampa, Florida. But notice that we have a surface trough that extends across the Florida Peninsula and into the southwest Atlantic. And we should eventually get a second surface low formation. And that is what we begin to see as we work our way into Wednesday. We have two surface lows. This one is eventually going to weaken. The new one is going to become a little bit more stronger and eventually become the more dominant one as it begins to work its way into the mid-Atlantic states. As we go through the first five days, this is the total precipitation forecast from HBC. And as we alluded to for the last several days, the precip total forecast would eventually increase. Sure enough, we now have precip total forecast in excess of 11 inches right around Daytona Beach, Florida. Now, I really do not expect to see rainfall totals that significant as we go into the interior regions of the state. However, we could still see some locally high rainfall totals. And so this basically just shows you that there is definitely the risk of some street flooding, especially in low-lying areas. And then as we continue into day six, so this is next Thursday, the surface low is expected to be at 1,004 millibars as it begins to work its way into the outer banks of North Carolina. By day seven, it's moving into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. A look at the most recent model guidance is on the way, but we need to switch over to the eastern Pacific where we have a very significant weather setup ongoing here. This is Tropical Storm Hova. It is forecast to become a major hurricane by 5 a.m. on Monday. And the problem lies in the fact that the forecast takes this inland near Puerto Vallarta between Monday night and Tuesday morning. But all interests within this cone of error need to be taking a very close watch at this system because there's always that chance that it deviates a little bit more toward the north or toward the south in forecast. And this also includes Manzanillo. This is a look at the latest spaghetti model plots for Tropical Storm Hova. And many of the models are in general agreement with the official forecast track. And frankly, some of these models are not very reliable, especially the ones that take it this far toward the north. We'll take a closer look at some of the more reliable models in just a moment. But that's not the end of our troubles for interest here along the Mexican coastline. We also have Hurricane Irwin that we have to closely monitor. It now has maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. It's moving off toward the west-northwest at 8 miles per hour. But a sharp turn back toward the east-northeast is forecast over the next 24 to 48 hours. By 5 a.m. on Wednesday, it is still forecast to be a hurricane. 
And sadly enough, Irwin very well could impact the same areas that will eventually see a landfall from soon-to-be Hurricane Hova. Hurricane Irwin also has very good model support with regards to the turn more toward the northeast, so this will eventually be a second Mexican hurricane threat. However, there is quite a lot of model divergence as we go into the five-day forecast time frame. Some of the models take this more toward the north, whereas other models are keeping it weaker and are showing more of a track toward the east. So the main concern over the next couple of days, however, will remain on HOVA, and then we will just have to iron out the details with regards to the Irwin forecast. A look at the Eastern Pacific visible animation shows that Hurricane Irwin continues to be more impressive than Tropical Storm HOVA to the east, and that is because the upper level ridge, which is favorable, is located primarily between both of the tropical cyclones and so the flow around the upper level ridge is indicating that we probably still have some northerly wind shear going into tropical storm Hova therefore the low level surface circulation is on the northern cusp of some of the more intense convection that we are witnessing on the latest enhanced infrared nevertheless upper level conditions are forecast to become more favorable for tropical storm Hova with time that is the reason why Hova is forecast to become a major hurricane now with regards to Hurricane Irwin, the National Hurricane Center is expecting Irwin to max at a category 2 with 105 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. However, I would not be surprised if Irwin at least temporarily became a major hurricane within the next 72 hours. Here's a look at the water vapor. We see that Irwin has very good outflow in nearly all quadrants. And the late morning microwave satellite pass of Hurricane Irwin was already beginning to reveal that the storm has a well-defined inner core with a developing very small eye-like feature. In the meantime, the microwave AMSU satellite pass of Tropical Storm Hova was not nearly as impressive, but like I said before, the upper level conditions should become favorable, and Hova very well could be the stronger of the two tropical systems in the next three to five days. The latest Sims wind shear analysis shows the small swath of favorable upper level ridging over both of our tropical cyclones quite well. You can also see it on this graphic. And notice that this is the position of Tropical Storm Hova. The actual center of the upper level ridge is located just a little bit more toward the west. So we are getting those northerly winds in the mid to upper levels. But the upper level ridge and the tropical storm should become better aligned vertically over the next couple of days. And that is when the intensity forecast is really expected to ramp up. Also notice this mid to upper level trough beginning to dip into southern California and into the Baja Peninsula. That is the main reason why both of these tropical systems are making that turn toward the northeast. This is a better view of the current mid-level steering analysis. We see that the trough is already well in place over northern Mexico and tropical storm Hova will soon be embedded within strong southwesterly flow that will force the storm to move straight into this region of Mexico. Now the extended forecast for Hurricane Irwin is a little bit more up in the air. Some of the models are showing this trough lifting out by this point and the mid to upper level ridge just to the northeast of Hawaii is eventually going to return to the southwest United States. If it gets there before Hurricane Irwin makes landfall, it could cause Irwin to take a turn more toward the north, but if the ridge does not return to the southwest United States in enough time, Irwin will continue moving east-northeast toward the same general direction that Hurricane Hova will eventually make landfall, if not maybe even a little bit more to the south of that area. This is the latest ECMWF model forecast for Saturday morning. And as we work our way into Sunday and Monday, this is Hurricane Hova continuing to strengthen all the way up in, until we make a landfall here Tuesday morning. So this is in agreement with the official forecast that is calling for a major hurricane, at least bearing down on the coast. We also see Hurricane Irwin just to the southwest of Hova. And the trough is beginning to lift out over the southwest United States. Notice that the ridge is already making a comeback over southwest California. But based on this model solution, we will still see the remnants of Hurricane Hova near the Mexican coastline, and this could possibly help Irwin continue moving more toward the east-northeast without feeling the effects of this ridge that is already building in here by day five. Switching over to the latest 12Z forecast from the GFS model, we see both of our systems in the eastern Pacific quite clearly, and as we go into days three and day four, that is when Hurricane Hova is forecast to make landfall. There is fairly good track agreement between the ECMWF 
and GFS that this will be making landfall between Puerto Vallarta and Manzanillo, Mexico. So those are your two most likely destinations for this storm to be making landfall. And then once this system moves inland, we still have to deal with Hurricane Irwin. And unlike the ECMWF, this model is building the ridge over the southwest United States in enough time. And so therefore, the GFS has the differing solution by taking this more toward the Baja Peninsula. So the bottom line is that it's simply too early to tell exactly where Hurricane Irwin is going to make landfall. And so the main emphasis over the next three to four days will be exactly where Hurricane Hova moves inland and at what intensity. As of right now, interest along the Mexican coastline in those aforementioned cities need to be preparing as if a major hurricane will be making landfall. That is the most likely scenario. However, I'm still holding out hope that it maybe could weaken just a little bit right before landfall, and I'm talking possibly within 12 to 24 hours preceding the landfall. The next thing I want to show you is the 850 millibar theta E forecast from the GFS. Now, the warmer colors here are indicative of a very warm and moist environment, but over here closer to California, this is where we see more dry and cooler and more than anything just more stable air and as we advance the forecast we see that what is soon to be Hurricane Hova is located right here and as it's beginning to make that landfall or it's when it's getting close to landfall notice that we have some stable air trying to wrap its way into the inner circulation of the hurricane. Some of this potential dry air entrainment combined with some of the land interaction especially with some of the more rugged terrain here could allow for Hurricane Hova to weaken below a major hurricane right before landfall. But interest there cannot be banking on that possibility right now. As I said before, prepare for a major hurricane. You always want to prepare for the worst and then simply just hope for the best. Now before I close out this afternoon's video, there are still a couple more things I would like to show you. This is the 12Z ECMWF forecast for the Atlantic Basin as we go into 24 and 48 hours and then eventually into 72 hours. Notice that we do have surface low formation over the southeast Gulf of Mexico, but much like the GFS model, we also begin to see signs of a surface low form just to the east of Jacksonville, Florida by day four. And so this is the rainy period that we're talking about. And then eventually as we go into days five and six, the surface low is advancing more toward the northeast over the outer banks of North Carolina and into Virginia. But the tropical mischief in the western side of the Atlantic Basin may not end with this system. As we've been talking about for the better part of the past week, the enhancing phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation is moving its way into the eastern Pacific and the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico. If we return to the Day 7 forecast of the ECMWF, we see a return of the troughing over much of the southeast United States. As we go into Day 8, the trough is beginning to lift out and we see that much of the Tennessee Valley is being dominated by a strong layer of surface high pressure and this was the same exact pattern that spawned the evolution of the upcoming tropical disturbance or subtropical disturbance that we are soon going to be dealing with over Florida and we can expect a repeat of the same pattern here and sure enough by day 9 and especially day 10 here we go with the strong area of high pressure over the east coast this is going to promote lower pressures over the central and western Caribbean and of course this is a very extended range forecast but the European is showing a 100 percent purely tropical cyclone developing just to the east of Honduras so this may be the next thing to watch in the extended forecast period so just to summarize we are expecting a very wet period beginning in Florida during the second half of the weekend especially into Sunday and the rainfall chances will go up as we work our way into Monday and Tuesday especially along the northeast coast of Florida extending into Georgia and the Carolinas it's somewhat questionable as to whether or not this will ever gain a subtropical storm classification but the bottom line is that the overall effects will be the same and in the eastern Pacific there's a fairly good probability that we will have at least a category 2 or category 3 major hurricane make landfall along portions of the Mexican Riviera and then eventually we will have to deal with a second landfall from Hurricane Irwin but it's definitely too premature to really determine exactly where Irwin may make landfall and then finally just to top things off we have the potential for yet another Caribbean area of low pressure to develop during days 7 through 10 so it's quite an active period out there in the eastern Pacific and Atlantic Basin please stick with 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app throughout the duration of all of these threats